Hi guys, Mr. Anderson here for Science Lab 7, and today we're going to be talking about atoms, right? But not just atoms, but like early ideas about atoms. So we're going to take a trip back in time. We're going to go 88 miles per hour, make sure our flux capacitor is working, uh, jump in a TARDIS and just go back in time so we can see what people used to think about matter and what it was all made up about. So we're going to go back to the ancient Greeks, right? We're going to go back uh, 2,500 years ago, and we're going to look at what the ancient Greeks thought about matter. Now, the ancient Greeks, uh, they thought that everything was made up of just four materials, right? Those four materials were earth, air, fire, and water. In some combination, everything was made up of those, and it made sense, right? They could look at the world around them and see, oh, yeah, well, there's part earth there, and there's part air there. Like, for example, um, if you think about a log or a piece of wood, right, it was part earth because it was growing out of the ground. And then it could catch on fire and you could see the fire escape out of that log. So it was part earth and it was part fire. And it made sense to them, right? It was something they could wrap their brains around. And then at this time, there were great thinkers, people that would try to reason out the world around them. They called these people philosophers. And one of the philosophers, his name was Democritus, and he was really the first guy to come up with us with this idea of atoms, right? He, he thought that, well, um, uh, let's say you had a string of beads, like a necklace, right? And, and you ripped it in half, so you had half that string of beads. And you took that string of beads and you, and you ripped that in half, and you had half of what you had before, and you, and you ripped that in half, and you have half of what you had before, and you ripped that in half, and you just end up with one bead. And he was saying, well, what... What about the stuff around us? What happens when you keep cutting it in half and half and half and half and you're left with just that one single thing? And he said, that is an atom. All right? Now, people at the time didn't really believe him, right? They were stuck on that whole earth, air, fire, and water thing, but he had a good idea there. You know, we can keep dividing things down. Eventually, we're going to end up to these fundamental particles. We call them atoms. So we're going to fast forward, fast forward to 1808, a guy named John Dalton. Now, John Dalton... Um, he was a guy who really proved that matter was made up of atoms and that different elements have different masses, all right? He was a chemist, and, and he, he was very interested in, in seeing how, how you could put things together and make different things and how you could break things down into their simplest forms. And uh, by putting substances together to make new substances and, and, and taking them apart, uh, chemists like John Dalton discovered that all matter is made up of elements, right? Let's get a definition of what an element is, right? An element is matter that's made of atoms of only one kind. So if you have gold, the element, you have a bunch of gold atoms. If you have uh, carbon, the element, you have a bunch of carbon atoms. Uh, if you have uh, iron, the element, you have a bunch of iron atoms. If you have oxygen, the element, you have a bunch of oxygen atoms. So John Dalton really proved that things were made of atoms. Fast forward to 1870 to a guy named William Crookes. Now, William Crookes not only had an amazing mustache, but he also had this experiment that he ran, right? Where he had this, this tube, call it a Crookes tube or a cathode ray tube. And, and what he showed was when he put electricity through this tube, there was a stream of particles that went from one side to the other side. And it's an amazing thing, right? He says, well, well, what are these particles? really neat stuff. So actually, let's jump forward even further to 1897 to J.J. Thompson. Now, here's the thing. J.J. Thompson took Crookes' tube. He took Crookes' tube and he said, hey, you know what? What, what are these particles? You know, what if we uh, expose them to magnetic fields? Does, it, does that change them, right? If I put the positive end of a magnet up to it, uh, you know, is it going to bend towards it or bend away? You know, we know uh, with magnets that opposites attract, right? If you have a positive and a negative, oh, they're going to go together. Or if you have uh, a negative and a positive, oh, they're going to go together. But like charges repel. So if you have a positive charge and a positive charge, you try to bring them together, oh, they're going to get pushed away. Or if you have a negative charge and a negative charge, you try to bring them together, oh, they're going to get pushed away. Okay? And what he found was, J.J. Uh, Thompson found that when he had a positive charge close to this stream of particles... They bent towards the positive charge. When you had a negative charge towards that stream of particles, those particles bent away from that charge. So those particles that were flowing in this, in this cathode ray tube had a negative charge. J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. Okay, the electron, one of the fundamental particles in an atom. These little negative bits. Now here's the thing. We had an idea of what the atom was, right? 
uh, John Dalton said, hey, atoms are these solid spheres. So J.J. Thompson, with the discovery of the electron, had to say, hey, the, our model, our idea of what the atom is, it has to change. Because there's electrons. There's more. It's more than just a solid sphere. There's something more to it. And that thing that's more are the electrons. So in his idea of an atom, he called it the plum pudding model, right? It's not just a solid sphere, but in that solid sphere you have uh, these little negative plums, these electrons. You might think of it like if you had a, a ball of chocolate chip cookie dough, right? Where that the dough would be just sort of positive stuff and the little chocolate chips would be little negative electrons. So that was J.J. Thompson's idea of what the atoms were. They were these, these balls of positive stuff with little negative things inside. All right, now let's fast forward even further to Ernest Rutherford, 1911. Ernest Rutherford uh, decided he wanted to test Thompson's theory. He wanted to say, well, is it, is it really like this where you have this positive stuff with these little negative things inside? Or, or, is, it, or is it different? Let's, let's run an experiment to see if we can figure that out. Because atoms are so small, so incredibly tiny, that we can't just open it up and look inside and say, oh, look, I see everything that's in there. Look, there's electrons. No, they're too tiny, right? So we have to develop experiments to kind of give us clues, sort of indirect evidence to try to figure out what atoms really are. Sometimes in science, we gotta use scientific models. Now, scientific models are used when objects can't be studied directly. So Ernest Rutherford came up with this experiment. And in his experiment, he, he was going to uh, get some gold and flatten it super, super thin. Gold, you can make really, 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 really thin. And then he had this radioactive stuff, and he put it in a lead box, and he drilled a hole in it, and he was going to shoot these little radioactive particles at this gold foil, this super thin sheet of gold. And he said, all right, if, if Thompson's model is correct, if that's the way matter is, then these positively charged little particles are going to shoot and they're going to actually go right through the gold foil. Because if all the negative stuff is spread out in the positive stuff, then that, that charge is too spread out. It's not going to have really any effect on this beam of particles that I'm shooting at. That's pretty neat. Right? So what happened was you had this positive stuff, positive stuff, positive stuff, and it came and it hit something. Hit something that had a positive charge to the point where it repelled. It pushed away that positive stuff. So there was something positive, concentrated positive charge in the atom. What Ernest Rutherford had discovered was the nucleus. The nucleus is the small central core of an atom where most of the mass is located. Okay, small central core of the atom where most of the mass is located. That's where you find protons and neutrons. The nucleus is protons and neutrons. It has a positive charge. And you have electrons zipping around the outside of that nucleus in what we call an electron cloud. All right, so our idea, our model of the atom has changed quite a bit throughout the years. We started off thinking, hey, everything's earth, air, fire, and water, right? And then we changed this idea of atoms. Hey, maybe things are made up of atoms. John Dalton kind of proved things are made of atoms. But he thought, hey, they're just solid spheres. Through William Crookes' experiments, J.J. Thompson showed, hey, there's something more. There's little negative bits. We're going to call those electrons. And then Ernest Rutherford discovered the nucleus that we find out later is made of protons and neutrons. So our idea, our model of the atom has changed as we've got new information. So the atom is really an amazing thing. This is Mr. Anderson signing off for Science Lab 7 saying, hey, stay curious.